Hey guys, welcome back to the third video in this installment. So today we're going to go ahead and take a look at ESP Home and we're going to go ahead and add in our own custom sensor. Now I may split this up into more than one video, so a few parts, uh, depending on the amount of sensors we go ahead and add using the ESP Home. Now you guys probably already have set up your Home Assistant and added some things that you already have like your smart lights and we'll get to that as we move along now if this does sound like a lot of work or you may need programming don't worry it's not really that hard it's basically copy and paste the whole time um, I'll explain everything as we move along and set up the custom sensors so for today's video you're going to go ahead and need one of these uh, that's a ESP right there there we go and you're also going to need the sensors that you're going to set up today I'm gonna to go ahead and try and set up some relays maybe and see if we can go ahead and add a temperature sensor and maybe a PIR sensor as well so with that said let's quickly go ahead and take a look there we go guys so we're back in our installation and as you can see it's exactly like we left it off last time so I haven't made any changes that's the whole point of this series we're gonna go ahead and keep it exactly the same so each and every change I do you will also see exactly the way I did it on my end and you'll have similar results or you'll know exactly how I added that specific section I know a lot of times you see someone explaining something and they have a ton of additional things on here with this, I'm just going to go ahead and add each and everything that I have. I'm going to go ahead and add it in and make a video of it. Also to have it for myself in the future to know exactly what I did if I need to get back to it. Now to get started, um, once you have your ESP, um, this is a Node MCU, so they come in different variants, but they're all mostly the same. You get the D1 Mini, they, they vary slightly, but I prefer using the Node MCU as it has a USB port which is easier to program and to power up um, which takes a lot of time and effort out of it so to get started with it all we need to do is we can go ahead and click on the ESP home option right here so I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and that'll load up the ESP home dashboard now if you haven't watched my previous videos on how to set all this up if you don't see this option right here for ESP Home, all you need to do is you can go ahead and click on Has IO. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can see, I have an update. I should probably go ahead and update that. But you click on Has IO, click on the Add on Store, and then in the ESP Home, remember that's a custom one. Once we click on it, you'll see that there's an option right here that says show in sidebar. And as soon as you enable that, it's going to go ahead and show up right here. So let's go ahead and go back in here. Now, what you could do is go ahead and open up the ESP Home website as well. You can just go ahead and type it in ESP Home. We go up and go in and open up their website. As you can see right here it already gives you a couple of guides you can follow along here as well and open up those custom sensors but first things first we need to go ahead and add our sensor so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the plus sign right here and that's going to bring up the process of setting up the device now for this one I'm just gonna go ahead and call it relay uh, I now there is a specific way you need to name these It's going to be all lowercase a underscore or a number you can't use any capitals or special character characters in here I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue and it's going to ask you to select the type of ESP you have remember I said you get a lot of different variants so we can go ahead and click on it and I know I have a node MCU so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that go ahead click on continue and then it's going to go ahead and ask us for our Wi-Fi information so we can go ahead and get that in there so what this also allow us to do is do remote updates so in the past usually when you had a sensor and you want to add something additional or you want to modify the code that's on there you need to unplug the sensor plug it back into your computer and change the code with this it allow us to remotely go ahead and update that code on the specific sensors Then one more thing you can also need to keep in mind is 
your Wi-Fi SSID is going to be case sensitive. Um, I had some issues with it in the past. I would recommend just keeping it, uh, having the same case as your actual Wi-Fi SSID. There we go. And then the access password, I'm not gonna make use of that. I'm just gonna leave it uh, blank and go ahead and hit continue. Don't wanna save it. Now, once that's done, we can go ahead and hit submit right here. There we go. And now you'll see it tells us to select an upload port. So right here, I have nothing connected to my Raspberry Pi. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly go ahead and connect my ESP right here. I'm going to go ahead and connect that to the USB port of my Raspberry Pi. There we go, I've plugged it in, as you can see, Raspberry Pi, ESP, plugged into my Raspberry Pi USB port. So now once we have that plugged in, we can go ahead and select the option right here where it says over the air, you'll see it shows up that USB device right here, which we'll be able to select. Now, if that does not show up, so you don't have the option to select the USB device right here, what I would recommend is you can go ahead and restart the ESP Home add-on. And we can do that just by going back to HasIO and clicking on the add-on store or just your dashboard. And you can go ahead and click on ESP Home and click on restart right here. And once that has restarted, you should have that option to select your ESP home device right here. But first, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and hit the upload button right here. And now that'll start compiling and uploading the code. It may take a while because it is running on a Raspberry Pi. So just give it a few minutes, see what let it run through and we can take a look. There we go, that has completed, and as you can see, it went up and connected to my network. It'll give us the IP address of that specific uh, node that's connected, also the SSID of the network, and uh, the name as well. So what we can do from here is, once that has compiled and it has been connected, we don't really have any information to tell what the ESP should do. So now we need to go ahead and program it and tell it what we are going to connect to that ESP. So in order to do that, we can go ahead and hit edit right here. And as you can see, it gives us all the information that's already on here. So it'll just give us the base information or Wi-Fi information. This is just a temporary network, so you don't have to worry about that. And then the API and the OTA, which is the over the air updates. But where we're gonna go ahead and add our additional code or sensors is going to be just below it. So there is a specific format, but you'll mostly be using copy and paste on most of these sensors. So on ESP Home's website, all we need to do is I'm gonna connect a relay. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in relay. Search for that. And right here we can see there is a relay option. So if we scroll down a bit, it'll give us a example code of what we could use. So all we need to do is go ahead and copy this code right here and go back to our home assistant and click on paste. And there we go. So now we have set this up. So we have a switch, which is the type of sensor. Then we have the platform, which is going to use the GPIO, which is depends on the ESP itself. The name, so you can change the name to the specific item that you would like to call it. So maybe it's the relay is controlling lights. You can name it which lights it's controlling. I'm just gonna call it relay one. And then the last one on here is the pin. So the actual pin that you're going to plug that relay into. So to identify that, um, you look on your ESP itself, I'll throw something up on the screen, just a screenshot, which will show you all the pins that you have on your ESP. And you need to go ahead and plug that into the pin that you have identified right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say D4, for example, okay, I need to be a capital D, D4. 
And as you can see, everything looks good. There's no errors. So we can just go ahead and hit save and then upload. There we go. So that has uploaded. So we have all our code on the ESP. So now all we need to do is we need to go ahead and set up that ESP as well. But before we do that, to add the sensor. So we've added it to our ESP home. We still need to add it to our home assistant installation. So what we could do in here is just hit stop. It's not going to stop the actual sensor. It'll just stop the log. Um, then we can go to overview. And as you can see, it doesn't show anything in here yet. So we first need to go ahead and add that specific sensor. So to identify it, remember, we gave it a name. I just called it relay. Now there is a few ways you can do it. If you do click on show logs, you'll get that IP address of the specific specific. You'll get that IP address of the specific item you have connected. So as you can see, this is 10.0.0.143. That's the IP address of that specific sensor or the relay sensor that we set. I don't like using it this way because if you have a DHCP server that's automatically assigning addresses that expires, so it could change over time. What I usually like to do is use the actual host name. And as you can see right here, it's called relay.local. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and not the IP address. So I'm going to replace the IP address with relay.local because that's the host name on the network. So if the IP address change in the future, I'll still be able to access that sensor without having issues trying to find the IP address of the specific sensor. To add it, all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on configuration. Then once we're in here, we go ahead and select integrations. And as you can see, it does show all the items in here as well. We do have relay listed right here. So it already did discovered that relay right here and a bunch of other items as well. So what we could do with this one is we're going to go ahead and configure or if you do not see it listed on here, because sometimes it doesn't show up, especially if you just created it, you can go ahead and hit the plus sign right here. And then in here we type in ESP home. And then under host, we just go ahead and add in the host name, which is relay.local or the IP address. If you prefer using the IP address, hit on submit. There we go. And it created a config for that relay. So if we click finish, you'll see it shows up right here and it shows up as a switch item as well. Remember, we copied it over. Now if we go into the overview, you'll see it automatically added in the relay in here. So we'll be able to turn that on and off. Now we do have an option. I'm going to open up this in a new tab just so I show you that it does actually change the status. So if we click on show logs, Let's just wait for that to connect to it and then I'll just show you as soon as we switch, switch the button it actually shows that it has changed state so if we change this you'll see right here it's turning it on sending state on which will turn that on so let's go ahead and quickly take a look at setting up the ESP and connecting a relay so right here you'll see it's still plugged into the Raspberry Pi but what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug it real quick and then once we have that unplugged, you'll see we have all of those pins. It'll show you exactly I need to all the pins that's available on the ESP. And to connect it, you'll remember that I said it's going to be connected to D4. So what we need to get is our relay real quick. There we go. And that's the relay we're going to use. As you can see on this relay itself, um, it also has three pins. So we have VCC, ground, and IN, which is going to be that data pin that'll connect to our ESP pin D4 that we specified. So what we'll do is I'm gonna power this straight from the ESP, even though we should probably use five volt on this relay because it is rated for five volt, but I think 3.3 volts should be sufficient for what we're gonna use it for. 
So let's quickly go ahead and plug this in. So what I'm going to use is these jumper cables. So as you can see, it has those DuPont connections at the end, which will allow us to just go ahead and plug it in without any soldering. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this, plug this one in to the ground pin because it's a black wire. No, sorry. Now the coloring doesn't make a big difference. You can plug in any color in anything. So I'm going to take out another one here. This is a yellow one and it's even longer. So, and I'm going to plug this one into the VCC. There we go. So I have my ground and my power right there. Then I'm also going to go ahead and plug in the data. I'm just going to use a green wire for that. And we have that plugged in. Now on our ESP, you'll see we have a 3.3 volt. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the power into the 3.3 volts pin. There we go. And then the ground, we go ahead and plug into ground, which is right next to the 3.3 volts. Plug that one in. And then the last one is the data pin, which will go to D4. So let's quickly find D4. T4 is right here. So look for D4 and just use that pin. There we go. That is D4. There we go. So it's plugged in. So we have our ground connected to ground, VCC connected to 3.3 on our ESP, and then the data pin goes to D4 that we have specified. There we go, guys. So back on the computer on our interface, where we still have that relay. You can see I set up a camera so you can see the relay as well. And you'll see we have our switch here. So if we were to go ahead and switch it, you'll see it does something. The problem is that it's turning it off instead of turning it on, which it's shown in the interface. So it is a bit reversed. So what we could do is on our ESP website, let's just go back to ESP and view that code. In here, you'll see we also have, it's listed as a switch. So what we could do is we can go ahead and just click on the GPIO switch right here, and it'll give us more information on that specific setting. So if we scroll down a bit, and you'll see we have a active low switch, and we need to invert that setting. So all we need to do is we can just go ahead and copy the inverted yes. Go ahead and copy it, and you'll see it's right below the pin number. So all we need to do is we can go to our ESP, go back to ESP Home in our Home Assistant installation, and then edit that code right here. And then right below the pin number, we can just go ahead and paste inverted to yes, and then hit upload. And that'll go, go ahead and upload that code to the ESP to update that. There we go. So that uploaded and we can go ahead and stop this and go back to our overview. And as you can see, it is still listed as on and that green light is still on on that relay. So if we turn it off, there we go. As you see, that turned off the relay itself. Now I'm sure you guys know how to set up a relay. It's just a bridge basically that switches on and off. Uh, your wires, your high voltage wires, so you can connect that into your plugs or your lights that is not smart and convert it to smart. It's basically like a sun off. Uh, a sun off is basically just a relay with an ESP. That's basically what we just created. Um, now, as you can see, that works. So we have our first item in here, which is very good. But now we can also go ahead and add some additional items to that code. So to do that in ESP Home, so we're still going to use the exact same sensor here. So if you do have more than one relay, so I have something right here that's really big, which is an eight channel relay. So 
I can slide that in right here. And as you can see, that has eight channels of relays. So we can go ahead and add in some additional relays. Now, an easy way to do it is just to go ahead and copy the existing information because it's still a switch. We can't add, it's going to block you. So right here, it'll block you from adding a additional switch. So if you copy this right here and just try to paste it, and remember, you need to have your spaces right as well. If we add this in here, you'll see it's going to give us an X here saying that there's a syntax error. That's because we already have a switch listed. So we can't have two switches. We already have a switch. So in here, all we need to do is we can just go ahead and delete that. And there we go. So now that went ahead and it'll accept this one as well. So what we could do is we can do relay two, we can do D one for example, and then just copy this right here. So we can do, that's one, so we have two, then we can do three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we have those eight in here, and remember your spacing needs to be correct. So just fix this in here real quick so we have all eight of them listed in here for that big uh, section of relays now also we don't need to have the same pins so let's change this one to d0 then d1 d2 d3 4 5 6 and 7 because we start at 0 it's gonna go ahead and accept it. Now you can have this line spacing, it's fine, it should work. Um, the only other thing you also need to change is going to be the names of those devices. So they're all listed as Relay2. So we can just go ahead and change the names as well. So there we go. So that's set up. So we have eight relays that we can go ahead and connect all under the single switch. And hit on save. Oh, it's still telling me that something is wrong. There we go. So we just need to go ahead and remove that one or add in a space. This one right here. That should be it. So as you can see, they're all in line now. So everything should function correctly. We just hit save and then hit upload right there. And that's going to go ahead and upload that information. There we go. So we have these. That code has been uploaded, so I can go ahead and safely unplug this ESP right here. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and remove these that we already have in here because we're gonna replace this one relay with eight of them. So the same process will be applied here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in all these pins and we're gonna use from D0 to D8 for our pins listed right here and as you can see once it focuses I don't think it's gonna focus no so as you can see around here we have VCC listed on this side and ground listed right here so all we need to do is make sure that we plug in our VCC and ground and then connect up all of those pins so let's let me go ahead and do that real quick there we go. So I went ahead and set everything up. So I plugged in all those relays. The only thing that I did change is on the ESP, you'll see right here the cable coming on the other side. This one right here is now connected to the VC, uh, the VIN pin. Sorry. So VCC from the relays is going to the VIN pin because I don't expect the ESP to power all eight relays because that's asking quite, quite a lot. So what the VIN pin is, it's basically a bridge. You can also power your ESP from that specific pin, but it's basically a bridge from the USB. So the USB power goes straight to that pin, which means it go, it's going to push out five volts. Now, if we go back to our overview right here, you'll see it shows us all eight relays in here automatically because we already added this item. So we should be able to go ahead and turn these on one by one. There we go.
There we go. And as you can see, that last one took a while because it is quite a lot of power that it should be drawing. Now, obviously, I don't expect you guys to go ahead and add in solid eight relays. If you do have something that you need to have eight relays for, you can go ahead and set it up this way and just go ahead and use a, a additional power supply and connect the ground of that power supply, so the 5 volt power supply, the external one, to your ESP as well. And then you should be good to go with that. Okay, so yes, I'm definitely not going to go ahead and add 8 relays onto my home automation. There's nothing that I have that would use 8 relays. Um, so we can go ahead and edit that code. I was just wanted to show you guys that it is possible to add a lot more than just one item. Like a single son off only has one relay and maybe some of them have that temperature sensors. So let's go ahead and add or edit the existing code that we have in here. So we don't have just a bunch of relays connected to one ESP. That's kind of defeating the purpose right here. So if we go back to ESP home, we can go ahead and edit that code right here. And as you can see, it still has those eight relays listed in here, which we're not going to use. So we may use one relay, that one board that we have. So fairly easy, we can just go ahead. Uh, what I'm gonna use is a DHT uh, right there. So as you can see, I have a temperature sensor. This is just a DHT 11. It's the only one I have on hand at the moment. So in order to add a DHT sensor, all you need to do is go to ESP Home, search for DHT, and it'll be the first result right there. We can go a bit down and you'll see we have this sample code right here. So we can just go ahead and copy this. There we go. Go back to our Home Assistant. And then I'm gonna keep one switch in here. So I'm gonna have one GPIO for a relay one. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the rest just below it. So everything under the second platform, I'm gonna remove all those relays and then add in the sensor. Now, as you can see, I'm adding it in right at the edge. That's because it's a different type of sensor. It's not a switch, but it's a sensor. It's a DHT and we can leave it as D2. We can use that pin, so that should be all right. And we can also change the name, so the location of that specific sensor. Let's say I'm gonna leave that as living room, but you can go ahead and rename that to the location of that sensor. And then the update interval. I'm gonna change that to 15 or 10 seconds for now, just because we're going to use this as an example, but you can leave that as 60 seconds. So remember DHD to pin D2. And we're going to go ahead and upload that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my two powers first. So on your DHT sensor, you may want to go ahead and look up your specific uh, pin layout of the sensor that you got. As you can see on here, there's not really a lot of markings on here, but I can see there's a little minus, which is probably going to be the negative, And then I have a S right here which is going to be my signal. So my VCC or power is going to be the middle one right here. And then on the relay, obviously VCC, that's going to be the power. So I'm gonna plug that in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my ground wires. So for ground, I'm gonna go ahead and look for the ground pin. So right here, it's the middle one on my relay. And then on my DHT sensor, it's going to be the ground is this minus sign. And we're going to plug it in right there. So on our ESP, we're going to go ahead and plug in the two ground wires first. So I have ground right here. Plug that in. Then the ground off of my relay. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in on this side. And then VCC, the same thing. I'm going to use the 3.3 volt because that's what, okay for a single relay. And then on my DHT, that's listed right here, the power is also going to go to a 3.3 voltage. So you have a couple of them listed on your ESP or Node MCU. And you can just go ahead and plug them straight in without using any soldering. 
Now it's the two data pins. So remember, for the relay, we are using D0. And for the DHT, it's going to be D1. So for signal cables, I'm just going to use purple and blue. So D1 is for our so D1 is for our DHT11. I'm going to plug this into the signal cable from D1 to the signal cable of the DHT. And then from the signal cable of the relay, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in to D0 right here. There we go. So now we have connected the relay and the temperature sensor. We can go ahead and power that up. There we go. So we did plug that in and as you can see, it is starting to update the information in here. However, it is giving us an error message right here saying that check our wiring and we may need to specify a DHT model. So if we go back to our DHT temperature sensor, we'll see in the configuration variables. If we look a bit down, it'll give us all the information and then we have model right here. And we may need to go ahead and add that to our code real quick. So we can go ahead and go back to Home Assistant, click on Edit. We can just go ahead and view the relay. The name of that is still relay. We can go ahead and hit Edit. And as you can see the sensor, we don't have a model specified. So under the pin number or under DHT, we can just go ahead and add in the model. And colon. And that is a DHT11. There we go. And that should fix the problem. So we can just go ahead and hit upload. So all I did is I just updated it and added in the model number in there. And let's see if that solves the issue for us. There we go. And as you can see, once we have updated that and added in the model number, it now tells us the temperature and humidity. So now we have a relay that we can control and we can also go ahead and view the temperature. Now, as you can see, it's not really showing it on here. So we may need to go ahead and make some changes to the interface itself. So right here, all we need to do is we can just go ahead and click on this button right here that says configure UI. The first time you're doing it, it is going to say that it won't auto detect some new entities. So that's fine. Um, it's not necessary for us. And now we can go ahead and hit the plus sign right here that says add card. And all our sensors is called entities. And we want to go ahead and add in that temperature and humidity sensor. So that DHT11, which will be listed as a entity. So we can go ahead and click on entities. We can leave everything right here just look for the name and right here you'll see we have that living room humidity and living room temperature I'm gonna go ahead and click on humidity and then the temperature right here as well and then hit the save button and there we go so as you can see it has our temperature listed as well as the humidity so we've set up our relay and our temperature and humidity sensors Okay, so I did miss it, but it is listed up here as well. So it does show in these top cards right here. So, but it looks a bit better when we add it in, in here. You can also add a gauge, for example. Um, so once we started this editing process, you'll see we can go ahead and add these entities. So we can use a gauge. So if we click on gauge, you'll be able to select that entity and say we can use the temperature, for example. And then you can set a minimum and a maximum and that'll go ahead and show that information in there in a gauge form so it looks a bit prettier if you want to use it that way the same with the humidity 
thank you guys so much for watching um we're gonna go ahead and stop it there um i will have a part two and three and we'll go ahead and deeper into esp home and also setting up automations in the future if you guys do have any questions don't hesitate i'll be here just ask a few questions i'll answer them in the comments and uh don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of these and i hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day